here german unification 1871 right we find similarities observe carefully we find similarities between circumstances individual approaches for the unification of germany and italy almost all both are similar when you go through the german unification you will be touching or recollecting some aspects of italian unification also so that's the reason i discussed this italy unification before itself okay now see it all started with napoleon as in the case of italy 1805 1805 napoleon defeated austria napoleon defeated prussia also he collected rather he conquered more territories from these two at the same time the holy roman empire which was working with austria at its head it was disbanded and the territories from the control of the holy roman empire were freed so most of the territories which were freed from the austrian control they were brought into a confederacy which is known as confederation of rhine so there are many states small small states here and there they were all clubbed into one small group of 39 states so this is what is called the confederation of rhine started by napoleon right down the beginnings of the unification process of germany the beginnings of the unification process of germany can be traced to can be traced to the wars of the continental wars of napoleon the continental wars of napoleon when when in 1805 in 1805 he defeated austria he defeated austria and taking taking territories from and taking territories from it taking territories from it he reorganized them he reorganized them into a group of 39 states a group of 39 states and renamed them as the confederation of rhine and renamed them as the confederation of rhine r h i n e rhine okay confederation of rhine so this is what i want you to understand this is so obviously this is same with the case of italy also we saw this one with the case of italy also the same thing happened now in this 1808 sorry 1805 confederation of rhine this was created and as happened in the case of italy here also we find giving them geographical identity political unity liberty equality fraternity everything whatever he provided to italians was again provided to german states so obviously this promoted the sense of nationalism here as well sense of nationalism was promoted among the germans and with this sense of nationalism now germans began to believe that end of napoleon will bring them a separate independent state but as we have already studied vienna congress following the principle of legitimacy compensation all these things shattered the 
aspirations of the germans austrian domination was established domination of austria was established which means restoration of monarchical rule over the people who were inspired by the sentiments of french revolution ideas so obviously it is going against against the wishes of the people itself so you know that it is bound to fail so we have to see how this became a failure at the end so here when the german aspirations were suppressed when the german aspirations were suppressed by the metternic system or metternic order i am using different words because you all are aware of this we discussed it earlier so the metternic order suppressed the aspirations of the germans but the german youth okay they started university groups the universities of germany students started certain organizations called burschenschaft Burschenschaft is a student organization starting in 1815 right and it was started based on inspirations of Martin Luther why Martin Luther because i told earlier Martin Luther fought against domination of the roman catholic church over the german protestant group yes sir so martin luther was taken as inspiration by the students and they started to protest against bismarck uh, so this one uh, metternic yes metternic system so this movement of students began to promote nationalism liberal ideas so that's the reason metternic did not like this universities obviously the grounds of what agitations because students have a lot of power you remember usman university students how they promoted for the separate telangana yes or no they contributed a lot for this obviously you know the story there so here metternic realized students strength must be suppressed immediately so he gave a decree called karls bad decrees c a r l s b a d karls bad decrees decree means order in the name of karls bad decrees metternic suppressed university activities by the students no university is allowed to go for any kind of meeting no meetings no speeches and professors are also not allowed to entertain all this so movement was restricted but you know aspirations of the people cannot be stopped why they are vigilant so what was stopped by metternic here at the university level now it was taken to the next level by what is known as economic moves now the germans started a new initiative what is called economic moves what is this they started one economic group called jolverin Jolverin was a customs union. Write the word. Jolverin was a customs union of the Jolverin. Write down. Jolverin was a customs union of the German states. German states. led by prussia led by prussia now see here this is prussia this would be much better the yellow one is prussia if you see carefully you can see how big it is the biggest state of 
German states was Prussia. So obviously, bigger state will have greater chance of resource mobilization. If you have more resource mobilization, you can increase more army. You can also provide economic opportunities for all these states. They will become dependent on India can support the economies of Nepal, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Pakistan also if it is ready to work with us. But unfortunately, we have so many issues. One of the biggest task is terrorism being promoted by that country and which, uh, which have been constantly criticized by the Indian government. But that is, it comes under IR, I don't want to discuss that. So here, the big state Prussia with the smaller states like, you know, <coughs> Bavaria, Württemberg, Baden, Hesse Castle, right, Hanover, Saxony. So all these states, they came under one single unit called Jolverin or Customs Union. And this Customs Union was mainly, right, for what purpose? For smooth transaction of business. So the unification, be careful, write down a question. The political unification of Germany, the political unification of Germany was, the political unification of Germany was preceded by, preceded by economic unification. The political unification of Germany was preceded by economic unification. Elaborate. So, what happened here? Jolverin created a customs union for the German states where there will be no tariff barriers because earlier, if any, if any ship had to or if any goods has to be taken from this side to that side, more than 80 times they have to pay taxes. 80 times everywhere getting stopped and paying. You know, toll gates. Imagine a toll gate for each two kilometers, what will happen? If the toll gates are there for each two minutes, what we will do? You will lose your patience and you will start fighting with each and every toll gate, yes or no? So here, you like, imagine that they are like toll gates. Now this jewel one removed all these and they brought tariff free trade. So what is the outcome of jewel in here? Once these tariffs are removed, then it led to smooth transaction of business and obviously with that transportation will also increase. If trade opportunities are more, what will happen? Transportation facilities will provide. And if you, you provide transportation facilities, what will happen? What will happen? Economic growth will take place. When growth is taking place, what will happen next one? Industries will get develop and industries will be getting profit and profit will create a new class of industries which are called capitalist class. We discussed all these when we were doing IR. So the rise of capitalist class because of Jolverin, now they began to consider that their prosperity will be increased. Be careful. The prosperity of this new group will increase only when they get duty free trade. And these states, these states of Germany, because of their political disunity, they are not connected. They cannot give a hassle free business. Difficulties are there. So, what is required here? Unification. So, the unification process of Germany was further supported by, supported by whom? By whom? This? No, no, no. I, I, I haven't entered into Bismarck as of now. Capitalist class. The economic interest, the economic interest Yes, they will come down and 
once this duty free trade takes place across the german states then their prosperity will increase so the capitalist class began to fight for political unity that means much before the arrival of bismarck the idea of unification of germany is being attempted it is not that only bismarck came and started to unify germany it is not that germans have no idea about unification it is not about that there were no attempts made by the germans for unification everything has been done earlier but only thing is that bismarck took the most difficult task what is that expulsion of foreigners that to country like austria which is the most powerful at that time so that's the reason credit goes to bismarck but you need not ignore all this you must remember all these facts clear right so what is required here the business classes they wanted unified germany in order to have a smooth business but this attempt was to be very clear successful so they got a chance in 1848 revolution took place in 1848 at the time of 1848 revolution 1848 revolution now liberals liberals at frankfurt i told you frankfurt assembly started by vienna congress so this frankfurt assembly rather you can use the word frankfurt parliament the liberals started to make a new attempt what is that this one prussian king frederick william 4 was there frederick william 4 when revolution started in 1848 these liberals liberals means what those who wanted to promote the new ideas okay liberalism related i told you this one. so these liberals began to support frederick william 4 what they said in frankfurt you become the boss you will be the head of the frankfurt parliament you take the lead and we will unify germany like this they declared a parliament also at frankfurt when revolution broke out all these liberals at frankfurt they declared frankfurt parliament itself and they called this william 4 you please come and take the charge you are the president of germany he said are you playing a game what is this nonsense how it's happening the thing is frankfurt parliament is not an elected parliament not elected it was brought into existence all of a sudden by by whom revolutionaries okay fine we will accept frederick william 4 will accept okay bye you brought it okay i will come and i will take that seat and i will sit there but do you think austria will accept it austria will not accept why austria is head of the Fred, uh, frankfurt parliament as per the vienna congress so the fear of austria's attack austria's opposition prevented this person frederick william 4 from accepting this offer a great opportunity was lost but somehow he tried to interfere but austria defeated this guy heart attack came frederick 4 got heart attack then he said bye bye see you i lead pani puri at home and take rest let others take lead i don't want anything else so what happened here now next ruler came william william 1 also known as wilhelm kaiser william 1 or kaiser wilhelm very 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 important change that occurred in germany now he is like yes we should unify germany we need to unify germany we need to become a new country okay so when this person was thinking on these grounds
Kaiser William I or Wilhelm. Both are same. Okay, he is known by two names. Kaiser William I or Wilhelm. Please focus on that lecture part. Don't look into the mobiles when the lecture is going on because it will unnecessarily deviate your concentration. I am discussing whatever is there. If you go to hundred, I mean ten websites, you will get this information. But the way we are presenting it, that is according to the exam requirement. I am telling you one thing: the reason why sometimes you find it difficult. I tell you the reason. My lecture is as per the exam orientation. The way questions are asked, the way topics are being dealt with, the way you find the UPSC questions, you will find the lecture. So please try to understand the way questions are coming in exam. You find answers here. That's what I am telling you. Go to room open the old question papers bring me one question which you don't understand from my lecture part you have done italy unification whatever question you find earlier you will find there we will do one thing monday when we come to class i will read out all the upsc questions from world history then you will understand i hope you by now you would be doing this one if you do this you will definitely understand you will not miss the class also because some people they want information information you can get anywhere if you want information you need not come to me yes or no go to wikipedia 10 pages 100 pages are there but what is useful for exam you should take so in that way we guide you properly so that's why we guide you properly where it is relevant where it is required to be elaborated there we will elaborate it's not that this information you can find everywhere no okay so wilhelm or william now he wanted to unify germany and in this process of unifying germany wilhelm was to increase the strength of army why because just now prussia got defeated by austria so the need for a strong army was felt by king king wilhelm or william one and he went to the parliament the liberals in parliament they were not happy earlier king said we i will not come and support now they said we will not vote for increasing the army strength they rejected so he had no idea the lower house rejected and this man had no idea what to do so that's why wilhelm invited a person called bismarck known for his ruthless suppression of revolts aggression and he is more experienced worked as a diplomat in Russia, France, Austria, in all these states, Bismarck worked as diplomat. He had a lot of experience, known for his ruthlessness. Everything is in favor of Bismarck. So at that critical stage, Bismarck was invited to take lead. And from now onwards, the policy of coal and iron is going to be led by the policy of blood and iron two things i gave you what is policy of coal and iron jolverin attempts to economically unify and now blood and iron what is this elimination occupation elimination subjugation blood represents war why force force and iron represent iron will of bismarck blood and iron policy so this blood and iron policy bismarck began to unify germany so how it happened is the topic for the discussion okay
so take 2 minutes break 2 to 3 minutes just go through what all i have discussed so far just 2 to 3 minutes break just go through that what all we discussed so far german unification you add information from sources there are so many websites okay there are so many websites and uh, this class is sufficient for you to club all this into one single go it is economic integration strengthening germany economically by unified policies no the po the issue here is that the policy of coal and iron this is coal and iron policy gave unity for germans this is economic unity remember this is economic unity not political unity my point here is german unification was achieved in the economic field initially later it was political what generally we see in books is that germany unification was a political unification done by bismarck but that is not the case without a strong desire for the unification is it possible for bismarck also to unify do you expect indian national movement to be successful without the support of masses and the contribution of moderates and extremists do you think that gandhi would have done it easily not at all the result of indian independence was a contribution of various factors home rule movement revolutionary nationalist socialist extremist moderates gandhi ji bose ambedkar dada bhai nawaroz ji so many are there who contributed it's not the contribution of only one single individual person yes or no right so now targeting bismarck emma role of german people obviously it will be there at the ground level no no the thing is economic unity provided basis for execution of blood and iron policy remember carefully economic unity was achieved by jolverin where all the german states were brought into one unit so this itself is a unity but this is economic unity all the people were realizing the benefits of this so that means germans got united this is only economic but political unity is required where there would be no foreign control over you jolverin is no doubt only a group of germans and german states austria is not a part of that but still german states were under austrian control that must be eliminated so the unity that was achieved in the economic field was to be fulfilled sorry was to be complete only with political yes political unity was acquired by blood and iron policy whereas jolverin had already created 
economic unity okay it's clear now